Hi, my name is Nagarajan Sridhar from Texas Instruments, and I work in the area of renewable energy. We all know that the world is going through an increasing demand for energy, and it's only going to grow over the next few years and decades. TI is definitely working on solutions related to so this problem. One area that we are focusing on is energy harvesting. Now, what is energy harvesting? Energy harvesting is simply extracting uh, the energy from the environment. Now, it turns out that there are three areas of, uh, um, of light so of sources that we can work on. One is light, the other one is heat, and the third one is mechanical, such as vibrational harvesting. And it turns out that light energy is by far much more available than the other two. So the focus of this discussion would be on light. So now one example of where we can use light is mobile computing, such as smartphones and home building applications. So if you look at a light source, we have the sun that's available outdoors. And indoors, it's a different light source, which is not the sun, but all the, um, the halogen bulbs and all the different fluorescent uh, uh, bulbs that's available indoors. Now, what is different between outdoor and indoors? Now, if you look at the light spectrum, and if I draw the wavelength here, and we can call this as intensity or power, and with an increasing wavelength, most of the the light is up, that is absorbed from the sun is more in the red region. Now, there are a lot of cell, solar cells available to take care of this area. And it's fairly, uh, and, and there, there are enough cells with different good efficiencies in this region. Now, it turns out that when we go indoors, the light spectrum changes. So, it's more towards this region, which is kind of the blue and the violet region. So obviously, one big difference that you can see is the type of solar cell used. So this is focusing more on the uh, blue-violet region, and this is focusing more on the red region. In addition to this, the challenge is the availability of light indoors, and also the mechanical challenges. Clearly, these solar cells need to be wrapped around the devices like the smartphones I'm talking about uh, in a much more uh, aesthetic and in a in more of a conformable uh, uh, manner. So there are those challenges are certainly available. Now, in addition to this, the, the other thing that needs to be addressed, if you kind of look at the whole ecosystem for this energy harvesting, is the power or the energy extraction. So regardless of what solar cell you have, you need to make sure that we extract maximum power out of this. So before we get into that, let's take a quick look at the cell characteristic, or what is called the standard IV curve. So this is the current versus the voltage. And if you look at a classic solar cell IV curve, it is simply in this form. And <clears throat> one area that we need to focus on in this IV curve is somewhere here. And this is called the maximum power point. And the reason for that is, obviously, we want to get the maximum energy extracted from the solar cell. Now, how do we do this? Now, it turns out that, as I said, in this ecosystem, there is some part of power electronics also attached to the solar cell that will enable maximum power being extracted from the cell. And now this involves some power electronics and some control features. So it turns out that now there are a lot of good control algorithms or the MPPT algorithms available in the market. Now the challenge is for such an ecosystem for energy harvesting, we need to make sure we pick the right controller. And the reason I'm bringing controller is because there is a lot of processing power that could be involved depending on the algorithm that's uh, chosen. So if you think about it, the algorithm, if it has a lot of computation, it would require a lot of processing power. That means the actual energy that is um, uh, that is the output for this whole system could be lowered. So it's kind of a trade-off between where you want to have uh, how much energy needs to be extracted to get the maximum uh, power point at an accurate level versus how much you want to really output. So that's, well, that's one big challenge 
for this uh, for the from the uh, uh, from the power electronics side. Now it turns out that if you also look at an indoor application or even an outdoor application, you're not going to have this IV curve all the time. There could be some kinks. And what does that mean? It turns out that when you have a certain uh, some uh, suboptimal conditions, such as shading, such as a leaf uh, falling on a solar panel outdoor, and indoor, let's say you have you are sitting in a conference room and you have a notebook or uh, some kind of a, like a coffee mug next to your laptop or your smart smartphone, it could be shading or it, may, it would be kind of giving you a lesser amount of light than what you would normally have. In such a situation, your IV curve would now, now be distorted. So this is a non-optimal condition that I'm drawing and this is an optimal case. So one classic case would be due to shading, where now you are looking at two different MPPT or two different maximum power. So now the challenge is, does your control algorithm be able to differentiate the two different MPPTs and tell you what the uh, maximum power needs to be and thereby extract it in the right manner. So again, if you think about it, this whole ecosystem needs to comprehend uh, not only the maximum power, but also any suboptimal condition that uh, typically happens in a realistic uh, situation. So uh, this, this challenge has been worked on uh, over the last few years and will be continued to be improved over the next few years to make this a very um, uh, effective solution and definitely enable, uh, with more, uh, en enable more solutions to come up with uh, 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 energy uh, solutions for uh, for the harvesting world. So in the summary, we've clearly shown that light is a very good source for energy harvesting. In addition to that, we talked about very good solutions that we can come up with for maximum power point tracking, not only in an optimal situation, but also in suboptimal cases. And all these things will certainly help us develop more innovative solutions to solve the energy problem. Thank you.